Hi everyone, Louis from Spectora here. Today we're gonna to talk about some of the big no-nos in home inspecting. I'm talking about things that either aren't best practice, they can land you in a lot of trouble, or they can leave you open to serious liability issues. Spectora has over 6,000 home inspectors, and we have a really active community online in our Facebook user group and on our Instagram channel. So some of these tips we've gleaned directly from them. And I promise I'm not here to talk about Spectora too much, but I am gonna leave a link or two in the description. One is gonna be for a free trial of the app, and the second is gonna be for a 15 minute fit call if you wanna learn more about the app or maybe even see a little bit of it in action. All right, let's get started. So I'm gonna say that a lot of things we're gonna talk about have a lot of nuance from state to state. So if there's any major exceptions, I'll do my best to note that. Along those lines, the penalties for doing some of these things are going to be really different state to state because some states have uh, governing bodies and licensing requirements and other states don't. If you're a member of InterNACHI, which I highly recommend you check out, they have their own code of ethics and standard of practice, things that you need to do in order to be a member and stay in good standing with the organization. I'm also going to invite some of our more experienced inspectors. If you have things to add that sound important, go ahead and jump in the comments and do that. I'm going to move through some of these really quickly, but some of them do bear a little bit more explanation. I'm trusting you all to help me with that. Last thing to mention is that there is a kind of a fine line between things that a home inspector is not allowed to do versus things that they're not required to do. Uh, and I'll try to make that distinction whenever I can. All right, so let's start with some of the really obvious ones. One, home inspectors cannot offer to fix the problems that they find during the home inspection. So if you have like a roofing business and you are finding defects in people's roofs during home inspections and you're referring all of those defects back to your own business, I think we can all see there's a conflict of interest there. This is actually illegal in a lot of cases in states and it could cause you to lose your license. You should also note that it doesn't matter if you disclose that conflict. Sometimes just the appearance of something improper is enough to do damage to your reputation. Reputation is everything in this business. You need to be really careful with this stuff. You can't cause damage to a home in order to inspect it. So you can't just like rip out some drywall in order to see some wiring that's on the other side of it. This is kind of home inspecting 101. Home inspections need to be non-invasive and they need to be primarily visual. In fact, you're not even supposed to move things in the household like furniture in order to access an area that you need to do an inspection in. So it's important to work with the seller in advance to make sure that you're going to have access to all the areas of the home that you need to so you're not put in this position where you have to move things physically when you're in the house. This next one is sort of related to that which is you can't inspect an area of a home that has an immediate safety hazard. So if you see evidence that a home has like serious structural damage that went unnoticed and undisclosed it's okay to not inspect that area of the home. And in fact, you should not inspect that area of the home if there's something that is immediate that it could cause harm to yourself and others. Another good example of this is like a weather hazard. If it snowed the day before and you normally like to get up and walk roofs, it's not safe to do that. That's an immediate safety hazard don't do it. Now, in a lot of cases, if there is an immediate safety hazard, it's your responsibility to stop your home inspection, notify the seller, and you may need to notify all parties involved depending on the severity of the hazard. I'm talking about the realtor, any other people that might be interacting with the home for the purposes of the sale. Next one is sort of a gray area, but you cannot diagnose the causes of defects if they're outside of your scope. So for example, if you're inspecting a very old home, is it possible that there could be lead paint in the home, yes, of course it is, but you cannot make that determination because that requires a scientist to come in and test it. In fact, that's kind of a good rule of thumb. Uh, the home inspector is not a scientist. No one is expecting them to be. You can report red flags or symptoms of a certain thing, but leave it to the experts to test and make that determination. The reason why I said this is kind of a gray area is that some inspectors really overreact to this and they get so concerned with liability that they kind of get paralyzed. They don't want to tell a homeowner any sort of useful information in order to protect themselves. You don't want to do that either. Use your common sense. There is a balance to be had between being helpful and protecting yourself for liability. Hopefully this next one is no surprise, but you cannot comment on the value of a home and whether you think it has gone up or down based on the findings of your home inspection. I get that this is tricky. A lot of times homeowners will be asking you what you think about the value based on the home inspection, but I would just tell them the truth, which is you really don't know. This is also about being respectful to your real estate agent who you're working with. Uh, you wouldn't want 
them to be commenting on your home inspections, they probably don't want you commenting on the market value of a home. Don't speculate on the future conditions of a home or the life expectancy of a certain piece of equipment. So you can check whether a hot water heater passes inspection at its current state at the day you inspected, but it's not your job to estimate how many years are left in it before an owner needs to replace it or repair it. Don't inspect systems that aren't working. If an AC unit is broken at the time of your inspection, you do not need to disassemble it and diagnose why it's not working. You just make the note that it wasn't working, you move to the next item. Don't evaluate aesthetics or cosmetics. So carpentry, tiling, drapery, any of those things, those are all a matter of taste. They're off limits for an inspector to comment on. You're just gonna have to bite your tongue about those beige curtains. A home inspector cannot determine whether any items in the house comply with various business codes. Hopefully this is a relief for a lot of you to hear. Most of us don't want to be the arbiter of things like building codes. It's unreasonable to expect that we would know those things or all the situations where compliance is an issue. So don't worry about it. You don't have to do it and you shouldn't do it. All right, so I didn't cover everything here, but I'm gonna put a link in the description below to an article on spectora.com that has an even bigger list of things that home inspectors are not allowed to do. Might be a good time to mention that the Spectora app is really designed in such a way that is gonna minimize a lot of these kind of speculative things and make sure that uh, you're not put in a position where you have to comment on things that you're not supposed to be. Hey, I hope that was helpful for everyone. Thank you very much. See you next time.